Hello you guys. So today I am going to show you the process I am doing to making a, um, well, kind of refurbishing a box. So this is what the box looks like. It has like a little picture frame in it. I bought it from Michael's. Okay. It was like a dollar. And then on Amazon, I, I love to shop on Amazon because you can sometimes find wholesale deals for things in bulk instead of buying like like this if I bought just like this thing you know is four dollars for so it's two dollars a piece but if you buy like a bunch of them it's cheaper you get them for like a dollar a piece and so I went on Amazon and I found these jewelry box feet that you can screw into the bottom of your boxes uh, your jewelry box or whatever you want a, a tray it does not matter you can use these if it has a square edge um, you can screw this into there now what I also like to do is take off the hinges Jaxie please I like to take the hinges off um, that way I can get an even paint coat or any type of what I'm gonna what I'm going to do with it actually is I'm going to stain it because, keeping in mind for who this is for, this is for Mark, and he is more of a natural elements, natural color vibe. So, um, I've, I'm making, I don't have a lot of people in my life, um, but the people I do have in my life, I, I try to do everything I can for them. Uh, and I make stuff for them a lot, uh, Mark being one of them, uh, Allison being another. Of course, she doesn't really, she's not at the age where she appreciates the things that I give her. Uh, and she's really destructive for some reason. She likes to rip shit up and, um, yeah. So I don't, I, I make jewelry and stuff for her, but what I'm trying to get at is I make things for people in my life because I just like to. And, um, I bought extras, so I like to take all of the hardware off. That way I get an even coating. So let me grab my stain and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Uh, and another thing that I like to do is to, um, okay, so the stain I've got here is the Golden Oak um, Verathane Classic Penetrating Wood Stain. You can get this at any hardware store or anything like that. Um, and I have a rag that I use that I keep just just for the purpose of staining. Um, now you can put the stuff on with a paintbrush, but you won't get an even coloring like you would with a rag because the way stain works, you just, you want to rub it in. You don't want it to, so I want to take all of this stuff out of here and then you want to sand this down before you stain it. Um, because especially with these cheaper wooden boxes, uh, they're, the material is kind of cut and then it's just like kind, almost like a raw feeling material. So you want to uh, sand it down. Just get you any type of sandpaper, any grit, um, and just sand down all the surfaces because it's gonna make your, it's gonna take your, the quality of your box up a, a notch. And with this cheap of a box, anything helps uh, so I'm going to take the little picture thing out that way I can get uh, get around the little like this little piece all oh, this piece isn't coming out shit well I'm going to tape this up really quick and then, um, yeah, I'm going to tape that up really quick. That needs to be taped. See, look, it's totally like raw material in there still. Like, so you want to sand down even this piece. So I've just got this cheap sandpaper from the dollar store and you just sand down all the edges of it because look at the edge on that. It's like a total raw edge. Um, so 
So no sanding at the company was done. And I don't know what kind of wood this is. It's obviously like a very cheap kind. But you can still make these look really nice. And this is the best way. So I'm going to sand down my surfaces and prepare everything for it. And then I'll come back. Okay, uh, and then what I also did is I pre-drilled the holes necessary for the, the box feet. And so I can't find my painter's tape. I would normally uh, tape up this little square so no um, stain gets on it, but I'm just going to use a brush and just be super, super gentle. Um, so what I do is just dip, here I'll fo focus you guys down so you can see what I'm doing here. I just take a little, dip my rag in it, and then wipe it down. And you do want to allow for dry times. Now you can go on the inside or not. Um, I really like to f put fabric down in the, uh, in the bases because it makes it look a little bit more expensive. And you can use fabric from like old blankets or old curtains or um, old dresses. Like an old clothes is a good source for fabric. <clears throat> if you just look at your items in it with a new perspective, you can take things apart and reuse them. Or just give them a little bit of love like this thing. Because, you know, these boxes from, that's what they're for, actually, I guess. You know, a lot of times when I talk, I don't know what I'm even talking about. So I am going to um, finish sanding this, or um, staining this, and then I'm going to allow it to dry, and then I will show you the next step. Okay, my next step is going to be painting the gold feet um, with this gold enamel paint um, to make it match the clasps a little bit more. I'm not going to completely cover it in gold. I'm just going to, you know, for the most part, put, make it gold. Um, so that way it just matches so I don't have to change those colors of that. You can see that I've got the box completely um coated and this little little can of gold enamel paint i actually got at a local hardware store um, it is called the fix fix all brand uh just 410 gold it's just regular gold enamel paint and enamel paint is like really really strong good paint uh, it actually, it's like a, almost a coating. I'm going to have to s stir this. I didn't even s shake that. Um, ooh, this might be... I've had this gold paint for a really long time. And we're going to see if it's salvageable. It's almost like a uh, bronzy gold. I mean, it does. The gold sticks that you guys see in my house have been painted with this uh, enamel paint. And this shit is strong. Like, if you are working with, some, with this kind of paint, you might want to ventilate, open a window or something. I've got the, the door open. So I'm just going to take this. And just right along the edges and really just coat it make it look cuter that way it matches uh, everything else it doesn't match perfectly because the other gold is more of like a yellow gold this is more of like a true a true gold that other stuff is uh, those I'm gonna probably have to paint those too because 
This is gold, but it's this is like yellow gold. See, this is like that fake yellow gold. This is like a bronzy antique gold almost. This is pretty. So I'm just getting all the parts uh, finished up and I'm going to let them, uh, I'm going to have to let them all dry overnight. I've got a few different parts here um, and I want them all to be fully dried before I, oh, before I put them on the piece. That's just one thing you want to make sure of is all your pieces are fully dried. There is nothing worse than a craft project not being fully dried and you go to like put the finishing touches on it and like something pops off or something breaks or you notice like the glue like something slid down. That's just the worst. So, you guys, it has been fun today. I will come back in the morning when everything is dry, or if it's all dry by later tonight, um, I'll come back on here and we will resume our work. But for now, um, I'm going to get off here and uh, we'll, we'll pick up the video in the morning, though. So, it's not going to be... Won't be all night for you guys, but it'll be all night for me. So, uh, see you guys in the morning. Okay, you guys, it is the next day, and I'm back here in the studio. Um, and as you can see, everything is dried, and I assembled it. So, I put the um, clasp back on. As you can see, it, it. I did put a little bit of uh, enamel paint on there, but I didn't want to put too much because... It can um, limit the movement of the lock, and you don't want to do that. Um, I tightened this. I didn't paint that. Um, I might paint that. I'm not sure, though. Um, but all overall, it looks really good. And now I'm going to choose some type of paper or fabric to put down in here. Oops. Um, and then it has a thing here. So I want to kind of do a natural vibe to it I don't want to or maybe like put one of these in there I think that would be cool like fix this on there like a uh I don't know I think that would be cool because Mark liked these well I don't know if I'm going to do this one for Mark I'm just going to do this one for the shop so I wanted to tell you guys that um I created a new Instagram for everything that I'm going to be selling uh, so there you guys don't have to because I'm trying to get a website set up like I told you guys um, I have it set up I just don't know how to put pictures on there and everything so once I get that figured out I will do it uh, but for now I created an Instagram so you guys can contact me easier through my page and just get um you know purchase anything that you want through there anyway uh i will leave the name of it down below or i'll just put it right here on the screen um and then this is i'll show you these are the boxes that um i put resin in yesterday so those are all dried up i put some little just a little lock that's fabric down in there that I used. Uh, and then this one I used more fabric. And uh, these little tiny crystal, the Svorsky crystal I think they are. They might not be that brand, but um, they're just little tiny crystals that you can get at the craft store in the jewelry section. And they're just little sparkly points. They're really cute. And you can see there that... Um, and so, with this, I'm going to cover, let me grab my paper, and then we, we will continue. Alright, so this is where I keep all of my scrapbooking type papers. Um, and I'm just going to pick, so I've got these like little 
books. My mom gives these to me. Every time I go to Alaska, she gives me things like this. Um, this pack of ephemera. So it's like little note cards and just different types of... It's called the Tim... It's Tim Holtz Ephemera Pack, a collection... An eclectic collection of printed memorabilia. Um, and this one is the keepsake pack. I just love these because they have all different types. I got these off of Amazon for like five or six dollars a pack. They're really good to keep around for little projects like this. And then this is the ephemera that I bought the other day. They're like little woodland animals and just all types of cute little things. Tickets and stamps and little newsletters and so yeah. I like to buy those off of Amazon. And then with my printer, I just printed on some uh, photo paper these miniature um, pictures of like popular art. So I have those on hand. But what I'm going to do is try to find something that would go good with the gold with the gold background something just um that one's good actually that's nice so i'm gonna do this so actually would that stand out would that make that stand out yeah that would okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to cover this and i, I use mod podge and i'm going to try to i'll probably cover the back side with a different piece um but like i'll wrap it around so it's flush with the edge and then just cut the excess off. I like to um, tape it for, or glue it first. And, and I use the Mod Podge Gloss, the Luster, water-based sealer glue and finish. This stuff is good for, because you can also paint it like, you know, it's a sealer. So I'm going to glue this on and then I'll be back. Okay, now with this little mask, uh, I bought this at Hobby Lobby. Mark uh, went into Hobby Lobby. And uh, unfortunately, the Michaels near me, um, you know, they didn't have the things I needed. And so I found these on clearance. Uh, I would not have paid full price for them. But uh, what I'm going to do is cut this um, jump ring off of it which my snips are over here. So I'm gonna cut that jump ring off. So it's just the mask. And then uh, I wanna glue it down. Maybe not glue, I'm not sure how I'm going to affix that to it yet. But that is what you'll see from the outside. I love making these. And every each one of these boxes, they're so different to the next. So this is the first one. And I like to do that for... I don't know. I just like the different aesthetics. So this natural one, isn't that beautiful? Love it. Love it. So I'm going to let this dry and then I will attach the other piece on and then we'll finish it up. Okay, now the next step I'm going to do, I found this uh, little pattern of paper uh, and I cut it to where it has a scene that I want in there. In there. And since the, this is like a dull um, purplish red color, I figured I would kind of play on those natural tones. And what I'm going to do is put this down in here, find some pretty little um, de decorations uh, to put down in there, and then I'll mix some of my resin and we will... Uh, that's how I'll, I'll, I'll fix this to this thing right here with resin. Um, that will look really cool. 
You guys can't even see what I'm pointing at. Hold on. Yeah, so this right here. So this is the resin that I'm going to use. Just the epoxy crystal clear resin, which I got off Amazon again. Um, I'm going to cover this with resin. And of course the dry times are a, a while. So, uh, but I will show you guys what I do. Um, so first I'm going to glue this down with some Mod Podge. And y'all, this is going to be a long video, so, um, but these crafts that I usually do take a couple days because of the dry times. So, if you have and no form of patience, then, you know, I guess you can just skip around, skip through. So, I'm just going to affix this into there. And you can also use something usually like the end of your paintbrush. Kind of push down those edges. And really you just need the smallest amount. Well, you can do a little bit more than this. But you just need a little bit of a... Well, that's a really pretty one. You just need a small bit of of epoxy mixed up. So I'm going to mix my epoxy or my resin and um, let me figure out what type of, well maybe I should, no, put that down in there, no. Should I put that down in there and put the, I don't know, that would look cool but now I'm going to put some little charms down in it. Some little gold charms maybe this infinity symbol we can put that down in there um, that high heel would look cool down in there no I'm going to um, figure out what I want to put down in there and then I will be back. Okay, you guys, I've got everything set up how I want to lay it out. So the next step is to mix some of this epoxy. So these are epoxy cups, of course. Oops, dropping everything. Um, I've got these mix cups here as well. So I am just going to mix both. Uh, it's a one-to-one, -one, so I'll do a half, half a milliliter or 0.5 of one and 0.5 of the other. So you get the, you get the gist, okay? Y'all don't need me to spell everything out. And then I set up my little thing the way I wanted to have it look. So you can see here, these are just um, charms for necklaces, but i trying to hide them making it look like almost like a mask um hopefully all of the well they all should fit in this little spot here so it's going to be like a shadow box effect so i put it on one of my old cups so it has a place to drip off so yeah let's get started i'm going to mix this up and then i'll show you guys where i'm at Okay, I am all mixed up, and I've got these little gems here that I that were f supposed to be for nails, but I'm just going to use them for this. They're just little different shapes, so I'm going to use these little. They're like burgun or not burgundy. They're like orangish, like a burnt orange colored star. So I'm going to put these out over here. I'm going to put them on this thing and in here a couple of them uh, and then of course I've got my little sparkles that um, I'll put out and an old pair of miniature tweezers so I don't have a heat gun which is unfortunate uh, but that's okay
So I'm just gonna pour this resin on here and kind of move it around. Because this stuff is self-leavening, so it will level itself out. But I don't want to make it too thick because uh, I want it to be able to fit into the picture or the little box. Move my pieces around until they are right where I want them. Okay, that looks really cool. And then I'm going to use two of these flowers to use as like eyeballs almost. And since the backs of them are mirrored, they actually make a really cool effect. put one more at the top in the middle of the sun. So these are just pieces that I've had besides the mask. I've had all the other pieces for quite a while and I wasn't using them for anything so uh, I mean why not? I think that looks really cute. And then now I'm going to pour the rest of the resin down into, well not the rest of it, but I'm going to pour some more into here um maybe put a key down in there let me find a key and uh <clears throat> let me put it down in there okay i found the perfect pieces which are just old earrings this is why i keep all my old jewelry because what i do with like things like this is i will take my cutters and cut cut the earring down like most of the way so that way i can press it into the box the bottom of the box and it will stay i mean of course it's going to stay because we are going to put resin over it but this just helps it to stay in place to where you and it looks like you have um some dimension it looks really cool so Just push these down into that paper as well. And see, I've got this flower and then the infinity symbol. So I'll put the infinity up here and the flower down in the corner. Or maybe we'll put the flower in the center. Right there is good. So now we pour. And that's it. Well, I want to actually make sure I've got that flower covered. So I'm going to let this um, first layer settle into the box and let that settle um but what i like to do is i like go under this and just uh wipe away the excess globs 
Although you can sand that when you're done, uh, it's just kind of easier because it will leaven, level itself out. But the excess still needs somewhere to drip. And it's going to go off the side. Actually, that looks quite perfect. That's really cool looking. I'm really excited for this project, for this how this is going to look. So once I am all finished and all parts are dry, um, I will come back. But for now, I'm just going to add a few of these really cute, pretty little crystals. Um, but I will definitely come back when uh, everything's dry and show you what it all looks like together. All right, you guys, I wanted to show you what I was doing with this right here. This box, I had the fabric over it and I poured the leftover resin. It's still wet. And what I'm going to do is I bought these fairy spoons. And what I'm going to do is kind of bend it a little bit in the center. Like this. And I'm just going to stick it right down onto the resin. And as it dries, it will dry like that. And I'm, I'll probably um, add a few more, you know, cute little things onto there. Probably like... Uh, this little witch hat. Let's put this over here. And then here's another one that I did. It's still wet as well. I didn't I didn't put anything on this one. I just poured resin on it and put the little mask on and the little jewels, which this one should be down here. Um, I've just got to put these on a level spot to where they can dry evenly. And by, by tonight, by later on tonight, they should all be dry enough to um, show you guys the finished product. So... That is just how I do my boxes. I hope you guys um, enjoy. Uh, I will put pictures of how everything turned out. Um, or, well, I'll just video again. So scratch all what I just said. I'll be back. Guys, I wanted to show you how they look before they dry. So there's a few of them that I can't show you because they're being... I have to keep them up here because this part of the table is kind of slanted so it's not going to dry evenly. But I will show you guys everything uh, later on tonight, what they all look like when they dry out. Good morning everybody. So let's go to the back room and see what the creations have done. So these are the creations. And they are fully dried. Look how cool that looks, you guys. I am super impressed with A, this resin, and B, just this. How cool that looks. Okay. And then here is the other one. She's dry. This guy is dry. And so this thing goes in here like so. Hopefully it will still fit. I mean, it should still fit. It's not like that. That's a huge thing. Oh, perfect. But I do want to cover that back. But look how stinking cool that looks. Ugh, I love it. I mean, you can't see all of it, but it's still really, really cool looking. Awesome. And then the last one is over here. 
this one so you guys that is that one how freaking cool so I hope you guys enjoyed this video on my um, showing you guys how I do my dream boxes I hope uh, that you were inspired and I hope that you take inspiration and make your own so yeah I love you guys and I will see you in the next video bye